Face to Face brings you the big and hot interviews on City TV. But today, there's a new face in the state of the regular. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadou. And on Face to Face today, we're bringing you an interesting conversation. A man whose name is synonymous to judgment debt. Alfred Agbeshi Woyeme, he may have done lots of things in his private life. But as soon as his name is mentioned, the figure 51 comes along. Alfred Agbeshi Woyeme, businessman, is my guest today on Face to Face. Mr. Alfred Agbeshi Woyeme, you're welcome to Face to Face on City TV. Thank you very much, Omaru. Uh, who is Alfred Agbeshi Woyeme? Beyond the other things we talk about, but who, who really are you? Like... Well, Afford Agbusiu images himself. And a Ghanaian. Born and bred in Ghana. A native of the Volta region. With bloodline in Dagbon. And also a blind line in the Ashanti, Akan. Wow. And all those places that these blind lines come from are all royal homes. Um, I'm just a brother, a grassroots man, I can say. I enjoy being with the people. That's my concern. <laughs> you... You were born in Dabala. You went to Bishop Herman. How was life in Bishop Herman school like? Well, to mention that um, I went to Bishop Herman is to be interested in only the college. Mm. Actually, I was born, but I lived most of my life during vacation periods and all those ones and childhood time in Accra, Newtown. Okay. Agbajena to be precise. And I lived in, I worked uh, with my mother in Makola Market. I, I had been uh, following my father who worked in the judiciary. So we've been to Aguna Suedru, that's where I started my school, in Anglican Primary School in Aguna Suedru. We resided in Nkubim. So I speak Fanti very well. Oh, in the family, okay. And um, the judicial service carried us on to the Volta region. Who was in the judicial service, your dad or your mom? My father. My mom had been a Makola lady and the, the first woman and all those things. Uh, she's, because of the unfortunate because of this thing, these issues, she's gone to meet her maker. Condolences. Um, where I, I, I schooled in my in Hohoi, EP primary and the middle school. I went through the old system, so I had uh, my middle school living certificate uh, examination uh, with distinction among the very few people over there. And um, I did a common entrance. That's where I came to Bishwaman College. Okay, okay. Uh, with some scholarships and uh, others to spread and things like that. So this is how the journey to Bishwaman came about. <laughs> yeah. so, so your dad, what, what was he in the judicial service? Was well, in the colonial period, my dad's father, my grandfather, actually was also in the judicial service. Mm -hmm. His father was the secretary to the Goku Trade Association, who operated along uh, Keta and all those places there. And you can hear famously in Ghanaian politics called the uh, Angola Youth Association. Mm -hmm. After those things will happen in my home. Oh. Yeah, in my home. Your grandpa's? Uh, but yes, my great grandpa's place and my grandpa's place. Okay. My grandfather became the first African to be the registrar of the West African Appeal Court in a downfall. Okay. So 
uh, his father was a secretary to those trading things. So when you talk about this, Ekem Ferguson, uh, and all those uh, people, the UGCZ and all, they, they've been very active and mm. very much involved. In fact, they have been the main financiers of all those things. But somehow when the story has been told, some families want to make sure that they, they tell the Ghanaian people that they have been they have been and they are doing this and doing that. And a lot of skewed narrations mm -hmm. of all those things. But the, the facts and what they find in the archives also include their families, but it doesn't make their family the pioneers of all those things. That's what I can say categorically and clearly. So My father mm -hmm. then also started as a bailiff. Court bailiff? Yes. Uh, in the sending, old colonial sending writs of summons to people the colonial system you know all those ones and also studied the law to alongside with it and um we had a special relationship with uh, the akima bokwas too and um, some time ago when they were having all those issues i think my my grandfather was one of the people who actually moved the case quickly from here to London. You know, the West Africa Appeal Court, uh, at that time, you don't have a Supreme Court. So the whole West Africa, from Sierra Leone to Nigeria and everything, it was in Adan Adanfo here. Mm. Yeah. The here. Adanfo, yes. Adanfo was the major port for the West Coast. And we had the, the college, the Fora Bay College, in and Sierra all those things. Yeah, and all that. And so okay. the sea was actually the... Uh, the, the means of transportation, transportation. from one way to, to the other and things like that. From the east to the west? Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and my grandfather, my great-grandfather, they were, he was the sole distributor of uh, hard liquor during those times. Appetition? No. Ah, okay. Uh, Abruchery, the oh, one okay. they put in kegs. Okay, 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 okay. And then so when the boots come, they lift it and then throw it down there and all mm -hmm. those ones. So it had been a trading family for a long time. <laughs> But and um, you never became you, ne you never studied law yourself, did you? Did you ever study? Oh, uh, why not? How can you be a, a, a child from the judiciary and not do uh, <laughs> the basis of law? Oh, okay, so, <laughs> so like you went to a regular um, faculty of law, studied law. No, 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 no. I will come to there. Okay. I've come to that place. No, okay. it's not like that. No, okay. no, it's not like that. Okay. No, 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 never. Uh, interest and everything. So, so um, my father actually was in Chibi. People call it Kibi, but it was in Chebi. Mm -hmm. It was in Chebi that uh, my father married my mother. Is your mother from Chebi? No. Okay. My mother is 100% Ewe. Okay. My father, you know, our great grandfather married from um, Koforudia, you know, the new job in mm -hmm. Palace. You know what? And that the woman she married there was a princess. And that woman had her own parentage from the Asini Busian of uh, Adahumasi. You know, and a link to the Silver Stu too. Okay. So when they married her, that came about that uh, we have Mafikumasi. Oh. So the people the the seat in Mafikumasi it was a land actually given in honor of my great great grandmother oh. that was married there. And you can see that it's Brentu Asafo, the, mm -hmm. the stool name, the chief, and everything, Mafukumasi, and all that. They maintained that. But the, the man who married him has the mother also to be a, a last daughter or only daughter of Yana and Dani Yakubo. Because they were trading together too. You know, I told them they were yeah. doing those things. Yeah. And then, so you can see that from palace to palace, palace. to palace to palace to palace. So I'm a product of all this. You're royal. <laughs> I, I'm just a product of all that. Interesting. That, 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 that's why sometimes when people say, oh, you mean when you are insulting me, the, the next person by you could be somebody related and have personal relationship with me. They get the pains. They don't mind. They go away. And it has also helped me to survive because... As you sit in planning, you don't know who, 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 who you are planning against. And uh, you are family people from both the uh, Akan, Ashanti, and all that. You know, that's Nebusia and all this. So when you go to Adahumase, mm -hmm. 
there to uh, I'm known there and uh, so everybody and uh, recently to we in Dagbon where my aunt was made a Kutun Lana Kutun Lana in so Dagbon. yes so I'm also a prince in fact then Kere Yana is a you it's may, a brother. And you, so you, may, you, may, you may just be an overlord. Uh, you, you no, it's from the um, <laughs> uh, the the the, okay. the, the, uh, the, the female okay, side. So, no. side. Uh, and that, but for the Asante side, also from the female side. That's more powerful. And then from the every side is for the male side, and that is what it is. L let's so that, that that is about it. Eh? Let's fast forward. Austria. Were you working for Austria or you're working for Ghana in Austria? No 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 no, 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 no. Let me explain to you. After Bishraman College, I became part of um, the June Fourth. I was part of it. Okay, how do you mean? I you was uh, the Greater Accra. I started as the Greater Accra Regional Educational Committee member, youngest member of the June Fourth movement, and became a National Communicate member. And I won Kofi Ayukuli. And we did a, an internal coup d'etat and tried to, put, uh, we brought back uh, Dan, uh, Uncle Dan. Uh, uh, yes, uh, okay. to be the chairperson. I started with them for a long time. Wow, were you at the June 4 celebration this week? Yeah. This week? Yeah. I, I, I need no comment about that. I would, I would talk <laughs> about it as we go ahead. Okay, no problem. <laughs> All right, so then how did you get to Austria? So, I you know, so uh, during this period, I, I, you know, my family, can say to be positively the UP mix and things like that, and a few CPP and things like that. But the revolution actually gave me a different view, a different change and things like that. And for my own faith as a, a Christian, I saw and analyzed and understood that uh, social democracy was actually Christianity. Christianity is a movement. It's a way of life. It's not to say religion and everything like that, but it's as we do, Christ has said we should do. We do his mission. So social democracy actually falls into that. So I embrace that very early. So in school, in Bishwaman, all those were, well, I did my best there. And uh, I think seniors, juniors, classmates, we left my mark academically there. But we came down to, most of the time you say that distinction, uh, nothing less than that. Uh, you know, in all the certificates you get, I went to see from the... You were a smart kid. Mm, well, I could say that I'm a lucky person. Okay. But I think uh, I tried much. I did science, I did arts. I did combination of all, and I excel in all. And um, I think in Form 3, I think I had to do something with the Ghanaian, the six formers across the country, and I won. Wow. And internationally, I was, the, I, I, I was the third, and was offered, when I was in Form 3, that time, you know, to Form 5, mm -hmm. I was offered admission to Cambridge University, and I didn't have O-level, not that A-level. Wow. You know, but all this period, uh, my passion had been... Um, how you can use mostly the human resource to the benefit of each, the person, uh, the, the individual, and for the Pan-African movement. So I'm a Pan-Africanist. That took me to Libya. I worked with the late Colonel Muammar Gaddafi prominently. I said what? I started uh, with the Amataba movement. I mean, intelligence and Qatar intelligence. That's what interested me, you know. In fact, I was inspired much into that one by uh, my uncle, you know, you were involved, Captain Chikata. You were involved in espionage. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that is a wrongly used, wrongly used word. But, but it was something like that. Intelligence and counterintelligence is something, it's a good subject. Uh, I think uh, um, what I saw that the African... Uh, the paradox, the African paradox. Um, someone to blame it on a this, someone to blame it on that, and then the resounding story of Nkrumah. Why is our independent? We need the economic independence. Whatever way you may go about it, I didn't want to follow the traditional thing. I wanted to interrogate further. 
So those passions actually moved me away from the science lab, lab eh, into the, the domain of uh, the humanities and everything like that. So I stayed with uh, Muammar Gaddafi and uh, I was the coordinator of Ghana in the International General People's Congress after being trained in many of the ter tertiary institutions, some to be talked about openly, some not to be talked about openly. <laughs> and then I uh, had my career a development from there. That is, I left here after six form and had my tertiary from this institution, from this training, this, from this stuff, from that, from that. And uh, a lot of money was spent in my education by the Gaddafi uh, wow. regime wow. in wow. Europe and everywhere. And wow. I rose up quickly and became part of his uh, indispensable awesome. staff. Uh, so I worked as an assistant. So him, I was involved in the local B thing. Uh, the negotiation, local no, 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 the okay. negotiation to get uh, people out. I was involved in the turning the desert into agricultural place, the, the artificial uh, the a river, the, the river, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I was involved in the uh, committee that actually changed the OAU to AU. I had to travel Af Africa most of the time. In fact, when uh, Muammar Gaddafi came here, through the desert, where the elite team that came here, uh, football coupon here and there. I was part also involved in the uh, the first AU, uh, this is where people thought that uh, uh, he had the man of Togo cannot be and because of record. No, we didn't think about it like that. So I was part of it, part of the people who negotiated for the uh, Dieu Fivre Hotel. I mean, to be given to the Libyans here and there, and then money to do those ones. So, there I struck a personal relationship with, with uh, the late uh, um, president of uh, Togo, uh, Olympia. Yadema. Okay, Olympia, okay, Yadema. And um, I was, we were interested in a peaceful transition from there. And uh, when I go there, sometimes motorcade, this and that, and many of the African presidents wow. are friends. The former six, ones and 60s, 70s, 80s. Ah, my brother, is, uh, much of the activities were in the 80s, 90s, early 90s, late 80s, and early 90s up to 2000. You were enjoying life? No. <laughs> I was actually very, very enthusiastic about the liberty and the freedom of the African man. Uh, the young guys uh, to aspire and be who you are. So a lot of my set goals have to change all over the way. I have worked very, very hard and been in dangerous situations. Uh, I've been the uh, the desert, the where they are talking about uh, ISIS and uh, all fundamental Islamists and things like that. Yes, of course. There are wonderful people who are the Islamists. But there are a lot of them too who have got it wrong. Just like a lot of us here who have got it wrong. It's a whole lot of historic issues that has piled up. People have skewed it to their own advantage and it's creating problems. So those were the issues. I've been at uh, Niger, the desert there, we're protecting. Uh, you know there is an uranium Huge uranium deposits. No, be mined by the by the French. These are some of my issues with them anyway. So the, my issue here, it involves geopolitics too. It will shock you one day when I come and talk about it. <clears throat> a lot of people will do that. It will shock, shock you. I I I I am passionate about what I I, I believe in, and uh, by His grace, and I'm a, I believe in Christ so much, and I believe in humanity. I don't think I believe in anybody as an enemy. If I see you misbehaving, insulting, sometimes I want to delve into what caused you to do that. Sometimes it's a misinformation, maleducation, sometimes youthful exuberances, and sometimes the sheer need for survival. So I have to obey my boss who is telling to do this, that, that. 
And I tell many of these politicians, and I tell them that, look, you can't keep on using your people over here. Vote for me. I will do this. I will do that to come and better your life and your life of your people. You can't continue doing that. Africans are not ready for that. Ghanaians are not ready for that one. What the people want here now is they want progress. So you see, people say, how did you survive it? I survived it because of Christ. How did you survive it? I survived it because of my passion that we will all make it together. It is important. You've come here. Here is a house of the people. Everybody in the community, they come here. People sleep here. People, we go together. The issue here is that where will I sleep? A small corner of the bed. And I wake up in the morning. And what do I eat? I eat what anybody can eat in the Zungu and everything. What makes me different from somebody? The point is that are we giving our people joy, satisfaction? What are we giving them? So if you take the people's power and you abuse it and you try to let the people to know that you are a special class, you are nothing. You are not a special class. The, the one thing I, I will respect President Rollins and will continue to respect him, although the revision is a collective issue, you know, people and things like that, but I think he survived and led it well to where we have got now a constitution, which I'm holding here. It's a sacred document mm -hmm. that must be protected by everybody. Okay. Okay. And then through this very document, we will achieve our happiness. I'll come back. We'll speak, so we'll speak now, mm -hmm. from there, mm -hmm. I I'll, came I'll, here. I'll come okay, back. Good. I'll come back. Uh, this is Face to Face on City TV. My guest, Alfred Agbeshi Wuyume. I was just taking us through his personal life journey. We'll be back to talk about how he entered business, how that business led him into the construction of Stadia or not the construction <laughs> of Stadia, and how the song Woyume Woyume came into being, and what that means to his life, and currently his fight against losing his properties, including this very house we're doing the interview from. Stay with us. Travel the country in just 30 minutes on the U Tour bus. I'm just coming from the home or from the palace of the new Yana. This is our story being told. Journeys to explore. From the plains to the greens to the scenery to everything. Ah. There's so much we need to do, you know, to boost tourism around this area. Ooh, that guy was just getting up. Learn and indulge in the culture and lifestyle of the people. Shows on City TV every Saturday at 1 p.m. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV, and uh, my conversation today is with Alfred Agbeshi Wuyeme, businessman as he's known. But again, if you hear his name, you think of Judgment Date. How did you end up involved? in the construction or the not construction of Stadia in 2008. What was that contract about? Well, uh, to go directly into those issues, I think uh, I will have to first of all ask, uh, answer your previous question. Why Austria? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, after with Gaddafi and all that, um, I came here and it was obvious that NDC was going to lose in 2020. 2000, you 2000. Mean. 2000. It was going to lose. So, a lot of conversations were on and I decided not to go back to Tripoli, but to find something to do about the future which is completely unknown. Sometimes you will need to enter into the conversation and try to tell a guide it towards the common interest of everybody. So I actually told my boss I'm not going to renew my contract and that I had a duty also to perform over here. Then through their insistence, they got the Austrians To, to let me represent them here as the Vice Honorary Consul of Austria and 
through those local B issues and everything like that, I had a, the highest contact I can have in the United States, I mean the Western world. I will, I will end there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the EU too. So when it comes to anybody who wants me to do something, because I've been very fair, I, I actually accepted it. So actually I represented the Austrian president with another Austrian in the Ghana at 50. So I was with all the presidents there, representing the Austrian president here and there. Mm -hmm. If you could do that, well, it tells were you... Were you an Austrian citizen? No. Okay, a Ghanaian citizen playing that role? Yes. Okay. As, as a vice honorary consul okay. also. <laughs> so it, it, it should speak volumes mm -hmm. to you. I mean, there are some issues which are diplomatic. You can't talk so much about it. Okay. So um, that is it. But so these issues led me to resign because it was as if um, Austria through me was interfering to the internal affairs of another country. So to avoid a conflict of interest where I was determined that President Ms. Maskam, I resigned as a Vice Honorary Consul of Austria. Now let's come to your question. How come uh, 15 million things like that? 2008. Yes. As I was, uh, as a diplomat, I worked with the Kufu administration in the interest of the Austrian country and Europe and sometimes the United States, but within my own core belief, because these lines, nobody drew it, of Pan-Africanism. I believe that... Um, positive and constructive cooperation with the very people who might have taken something from you would rather be the way forward of uh, guiding our way out of the situation we find ourselves. In that, I had built a lot of bases and we've been doing so many things of this financial engineering personally to many countries. Togo have been a beneficiary and I just, but it's not good for me to even mention other countries here and there. And before this judgment, that I had got involved in the conversation on whether Ghana should go hippic or not to go hippic. And here I state clearly, Yalsafumafu even said it in the, as a test, uh, when he was a, uh, is a prosecution witness for the government in the court there. I traveled with him a lot. There was the issue as where the sports minister. No, Yao Safumafu was the finance minister yeah, of Ghana. Was sports, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, the finance minister okay. of Ghana at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, we'd move around. I've tried my best to, for Ghana to get out of here. here. A lot of the work I have done, and I want to state it categorically and clearly here, that Ghana's ability to go to the World Cup first time 206. was my work. Okay. The issue here is that I had to make sure that the black stars were taken to Austria, trained in the Bavarian region, sponsored by a company I work with, Red Bull, as part of my businesses, and passed there from there on the ground to that place, where I used my own personal money also to help as many people as possible to let it. So some of the players that know me personally also. So in the same vein, I facilitated the first and most modern soccer academy in sub-Saharan Africa, in Saftong, Fiji, there, where people thought nothing can happen there. No. I said, yes, we will go there. The Red Bull and other people, they followed me. We went to do it. And it's still existing now. The, the place, That's where Wafa has where come Wafa is now. In. Yes. It's my... You engineered that. Not only that, I added money, do uh, so many things to make sure that it's done. Not, I didn't stop there. Hospitals and other things, and many other things I've done. But those ones that were business, where I facilitated and got all people around to do the complete design, structure, engineering, and everything for this country, for which I have been paid by the state through those companies, we call them supply contract, have been 
Sugakupo Hospital, Begro District Hospital, Gushegu. You know, you can see mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah because it's in Dabola, yeah, so Gushegu mm -hmm. uh, District Hospital. All those ones. How did they come about? Particularly Begro, we could not get water. How do we get underground water? I had to bring even the whole thing from Europe for them to dig deep to another to get a fresh water for the hospital to exist in Begro. Because their conversation was, it should be in Kofuria. We said, no, Kofuria will have it, but let Begro have it first. I should have particular interest in Kofuria, mm -hmm. but I believe that we could do something better for them. So the late Jake and everything like that, they, we worked. We've been friends. Look, my grandfather and uh, other people, I, I told you about the UP thing, so mm -hmm. it's been very entrenched. But me, I'm a different crop, and many of us are a different crop. Mm -hmm. But does not mean that you will sit down over here for the belief of other. I mean, everybody can believe anything. And if Kufu was the president, and then do we say that his reign, four years, Ghanaians who don't believe in the ideology of Kufu mm -hmm. should wait and waste four years of our lives? We can't waste even a minute. Therefore, whatever will make that president elected by the people to succeed, I will do that. But I was clear that I want Professor Mills to also come in. So you're party opponent by helping the government to develop the country. You see, the issue of a party opponent or fool or everything like that is a manipulation by politicians to sow this. this. Right now, when you look at NDC program and MPP program, which one of it is really expressing social democracy? Which one of you is expressing whatever they are doing? They are the, the actual thing behind it mm -hmm. is particularly somebody promoting the father, we are this, we are that, we are trying, and if you want a Ghana, the constitution of this country Give room to everyone born in the Gambaga and anywhere who aspires to be a president to be a president. Who aspires to be an MP to be an MP. Not through this. This is the fight, some of the fight that some people don't want to hear. Let's go back. How did you get involved in the stadia construction? So then, in 20, 2001, Honorable Osekweku called me. Like, you've been doing this, you've been doing that, you've been doing that. And I'm, I, sometimes I met for in, in, in many of the African, uh, you know, you've been doing this. So please, what can you do for us to do a, a program for the youth? So I decided that we had to turn Ghana into a sports tourism center. You see, when you build stadium, you build other places and things like that, and you leave those things just to rot and go like that. I mean, it doesn't work. In Austria, what I saw was that they have Spores mixed with other toys, and it earned them 40 billion per annum. If we can only take, you know, many of these spores that they do all, all, all around uh, Africa, this uh, uh, running, all those ones, it gives money. So, then, how do you make Ghana a safe place for sports tourism where programs can be held, everything people hide it? This was the uh, uh, the, 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 the beginning of it. So I said, okay, Honorable Osei Kweku, may he so rest in peace. What, what a wonderful man. Things transcend, then he came to Rashid, ba uh, Rashid Bauer yes. and all that. So I, I had to bring in Turkish companies, European companies, Vamen. some of them ended up doing this, uh, uh, renewing this, uh, uh, our, uh, that, the bridge linking Akosumbo and Vota region. Atimpoku. At Atimpoku, that bridge. Yeah, you know? So I have to, it's uh, some of the Kudus companies. And that's uh, Central Tong. The new. Uh, uh, used to the water project. Mm -hmm. It was all from Austria, you know, this and that. So it was part of all those huge uh, mobilization of people and things like that. So we said, okay, for us to do something and that to have a justification, then we needed to. Uh, actually uh, host a tournament. That brought the idea about the uh, 2008. And believe you me, Rashid Bawa is there. Go and ask him. Uh, Rex Dankwa. Ask him. How did they win it? It's me. In, uh, in, in Egypt. Libya was their contest. I had to travel to, to trip, uh, Libya to actually tell my folks that leave us, let's do it because it's part of the Pan-African issues and things like that. So a lot of things were done. Then we won the whole issue. So we have something. I had to travel to Washington to talk to these guys that, look, Ghana, we have already, that's why I was uh, basically against the hippie issue, but we've gone into it. Mm -hmm. So how do we manage it? So the, 
They said, uh, well, so you had won the bid and you needed the physical infrastructure to support Money it. and everything. So then when they formed the LOC, Kofi Amwa was not part of it. I hear Paul Adumotri the other time he pick Kofi Amwa and talk and talk and talk. Uh, Dr. Kofi Amwa. This thing, he, he did neck into it. These problems. How? Why? Because the story has not been told. And the story will be told. When he was flying to China, I called him personally and I told him, what you are going to do is going to bring a whole lot of issues. Which will, will go... Why? You, Dr. Kofi Amwa, you can write a letter and instruct a minister. Because Kofi was so, 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 told him to do that. All I'm speaking about here, they are all documented. Many of them have been tended. So you don't... Mm -hmm. I'm not talking from the, this thing here. So the issue here is this. The LOC itself, when they started, I had to fund it. So that one, to they, <laughs> they compensated me through a court order. And that one had not come to the public domain. Okay. So I funded it. Then they brought in Dr. Kofi Yamwa. Mm -hmm. Now, the conversation here is that how did we do it? Obi Yamwa, wonderful man. Wonderful man. Former deputy sports. Yes. So there had to be a sports you know, conference organized in Ghana. It was in that conference that they declared sports to be a tool of social development. At that time, you can't use, because Ghana can only take uh, 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 soft loans. And you can't use soft loans to sponsor sports activity. So we need that declaration. It was from there that I had to go to the Multinational Investment Guarantee Agency of the World Bank, MIGA, in Washington, to get them to support the government of Ghana in terms of guarantee because we're epic and we got that and I had to go to the market here to make sure in uh, in New York you know trading here and there and go Bank Austria to, to take that money mm -hmm. and offer Ghana okay. that money one, almost 1.4 billion dollars okay. the softest loan ever to any country south of the Sahara so but politics politics so it's good that you're giving us this perspective, but also before because of time, then my okay, it's okay, it's okay. Waterville. So you were connected to Waterville in a way. We were doing our thing. Okay. Before we did, we were going for the bid. Then a lot of all these issues. They cancelled first contract first. The Turkish wanted to go to court. I had to go and compensate them myself because I don't want the program to be disturbed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. We, uh, Vamet said, okay, I want to do only the hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, Vitek said, I'm not interested in the hospital again because of all that, uh, the stadia, mm -hmm. because of all that is happening. That's why Waterville was formed and was put into together to take over from Vamet. Okay. And we did that transfer of authority and everything in Austria. Okay. But in fact, all this thing that we are talking about was a procurement process issue. Okay. In 2005, the procurement was concluded a concurrent approval was given, which means it's contract. That so is 2005. Waterville had been given a contract in 2005. To do all that, okay. the money to have been offered, Bank of Ghana interviewed me, they, they checked everything, everything was there. Who and who signed the contract in 2005? Do you remember? Look, what I'm saying is that it came, the first one that was signed by Rashid Baba was thrown out okay. before we did the bid. Mm -hmm. After the bid, by the, uh, by the law, procurement law, mm -hmm. when the winner of the bid if he received concurrent approval, mm -hmm. a contract is enforced. Okay. So what have you, together with my consortium, mm -hmm. received a concurrent approval. Okay. And that approval by law says that you must in 30 days sign a contract. Okay. Then they went to uh, cabinet. That's the famous cabinet memo. Mm -hmm. Where it was planned, it is in there, mm -hmm. premeditated, that we are taking this thing away from them. That I have gone to ch uh, China. I've seen the Chinese, and I'm going to give it to the Chinese. And then Safu Mafo write there that if we take this thing away from them, there will be international backlash. It's in the, in the cabinet memo. Then they said, then we have to rally all our forces internally and internationally to defend this. And this is what they've been doing to now. So you, you lost the contract that you had genuinely won? Not that we lost the contract, because you can't lose it by our law. So it was taken away from you? It was illegally subverted. The people who did that is a criminal offense. Okay. So to simplify Simple. the language, 
you and whatever so you are consulting got a contract to do this stadia yeah. I, I i'm arranging the money okay. arranging the, the, the all the people including whatever everybody i led everything but even before you could pour a bag of cement or put a brick on the f ground the contract was taken away from you and you are saying it was done illegally uh, the contract was not taken okay cabinet purported to have cancelled it okay <laughs> which power they did not have from law so I brought lawyers from London to come and deal with the matter mm -hmm. for negotiation out because I have spent money to set up offices in New York, Washington, D.C., Vienna, and uh, Italy, and other places with people, and I we were paying per hour mm -hmm. for over three years. We have spent over $20 million to raise $1.4 billion for Ghana. So then, if you say go, where, who, where do I get my money back? So then you went to op pro com protest legally. You it, went to court. Don't, let me tell you, mm -hmm. it involved the, uh, the BNI. They sacked the former BNI and brought a new BNI to interview me. Uh, uh, what you are seeing, you have not seen. Look, what Ghanaians have seen, they have not seen anything. During the NDC time, I was poisoned. There was an assassinated attempt on my life. And many, 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 many other things. So many things have happened. Jews pour into my house here and there because they have not seen a Ghanaian that is resisting them. Let me tell you, this country, if people win power, a lot of people quickly, you don't know, they are both, they pretend to be NDC, they pretend to be MPP, the people run around in order to make sure that the status quo, as they imagine, go on. So this issue here, I'm, not, I'm just not trying to delve into the main issue mm. because legally I've won all cases, mm. including the Supreme Court. Okay. Now, if I have stolen money, who stole the money and gave it to me in government? Who stole the money and gave it to you? That's the question. You have had four governments, five presidents. I'm including Jerry John Rowley because he has continually made comments and committees and everything on this matter. But that one is, uh, I don't know why, uh, Jerry. As I'm still loyal because the, um, the mm -hmm. oath and everything that we've, we've sworn, I still respect him and will defend him everywhere. But I will disagree with him in everything that you do. Okay. All my issue about Jerry John Rowley was opposing the wife not to run, uh, run and, uh, 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 and do what they have done to okay. Professor Mills. That was where it started from. But... Mm -hmm. It does not mean that that family, I still don't love them. Because what that family has done for Ghana is great. You are giving 51 million cities. Several years no, on, the Supreme Court it is not 51 million cities. How much were you giving? I won 105 million Ghana cities. 105. The government of Ghana, by order by the president of Ghana. Which of the presidents at the time? Professor Evans Atamels. Mm -hmm. And it was also erroneous that... It, uh, when a new government came, then I went to court. No. This matter was there. Together with the security forces until, and all other people with the AG until mm -hmm. there was a change of power. Okay. It was during the continual negotiations that I went to that place. There are two things. When Watavi left the whole scene, the Chinese that came here said, the Chinese that came here said that they cannot build Kumasi and our class post to you. At that time, what of you had already sent a lot of prefab things already in the sea, and they were negotiating that they should hand it over to some other company, Mr. Lichi, who, who was a subcontractor mm -hmm. and also owned by some of the directors of the what have you, to do the work. The point is that Afro women must be eliminated okay. from the whole issue. Okay. So, government went and borrowed money from. Uh, uh, Barclays Bank, mm -hmm. and that money resulted in the sack of the Barclays uh, Bank MD, the woman. There's a whole story about this. So when that issue occurred, they went and signed a contract with Waterville in 2006. I went to court on the procurement breach, which caused a financial loss to me and my people, on an issue of 2005. So when you read the criminal case and everything, that distinction is there. The, the so, Martin Amido, yeah, we'll come to Martin he Amido. paid two times this very thing. As an attorney general? Yes. 105. They sat with me. They negotiated with me. 
And they said, I should take my interest, my profit, and everything. And I took it out. So that the cost, which included cost to UT Bank, uh, Unibank, Unibank was not directly involved, but they, they financed the debt. Mm -hmm. So, they, and Ghanaian banks, mm -hmm. where the first tranche paid, was transferred from my account to them. Mm -hmm. The government knows about that. Both MPP, NDC, okay. Parliamentina, they know it. They've been lying to you people. Okay. The second tranche was paid. My houses that were seized and sold in the Washington, D.C., and other people who worked there were sent to them. So, in fact, the amount that were paid went into pay people and other people okay. whose costs were involved in this matter. All right. Now, at the end of it, the, we negotiated, we signed the, by the AG, there was a, 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 a presidential committee by the chief of staff and other people, and we sent this thing to the court, the court agreed and said they will not pay, I went back to the court again, and when it came to a time whereby if you don't pay, you can go to jail, they started paying. Martin Amidu came and paid two tranches. Were you paid all the 51 million cities? Was it all paid to you? Uh, 51 point something million point was two. paid to me. Okay. What point, point one? 51 point something yeah, was paid two. to me. Okay. It was not point two. Okay, that's fine. So it was paid to me, through me, okay. through me, to consortium members. Okay. In fact, what I should earn, I gave it to the country. How much did you, how much was your share of the 51? I'm saying that what I should earn. I just want to know how much you're supposed to have earned that you gave to the country. 104, 105, so that's minus general, 51. That's the general figure. Yeah, minus 51 is so, what I should get. Okay, so the other side goes to the banks and all of that. Yes. Out of the 51, mm -hmm. how much did Alfred Woyeme chop with his mouth? But what, 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 what does that mean? That, that I don't even know. Because you said they are consortium members. But what, am I also not consortium members? I just want to know. So, so that if I had two cities mm -hmm. eh, which I put to try to help Ghanaian youth program, and you where, you where, that where the World Bank have estimated yes. that we could be any 250 mm -hmm. million mm -hmm. euros yes. per year yes. in in terms of sports tourism. Yes, I went to uh, what do you call it the the. Uh, so you 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 gain what you you planted, and I'm just saying. Not I didn't gain what I planted. No, I'm just saying when you are in business is what you invest that you get back. You are consulting. So I'm just saying that. Do you know investment? I'm asking you. It's not capital. Every money, every every time value is on yeah. capital so and effort and money. Nobody has collected that. Again. Maybe I didn't put it well. Yes. I'm asking that did all the 51 million CDs go to Alfred Woyeme or there were other beneficiaries? And would I have just stated it. Mm -hmm. The government of Ghana is in a better position to tell you how much money has gone to who and who. But you they have Yoko. Mm -hmm. They took all the mm -hmm. accounts. They know and have all this evidence. Mm -hmm. They know where this went to, where this went but to. The why are they coming to come and tell people, but hey, you should bring the money. Mm -hmm. They should come out and you tell the Everybody people. is saying that as a woman should cover up the money. If you know you Excuse don't Excuse me. It. If people have been led, mm -hmm. I told you in the preamble mm -hmm. that to be misbehaving and be talking because of the state they put them in, why should I be glad of? I could have jailed a lot of some people. I sent some uh, journalists and other people. But I found out that you it's not think, their fault. You don't think you should clear your name now that you have the opportunity? Excuse me. Mm. This has become legal. Okay. And the best place to clear your name is within the court. The system. 51 million that was given to you, several years on, the Supreme Court ruled that it was illegally acquired. No. The that Supreme Court never ruled because like Because it had not gone to parliament. This is also a wrong conversation to the people. I was in court when the judgment was delivered. The, then you are... Relating the legal matter wrongly. What did the judges say? Good. The first ordinary bench said this has nothing to do with the, the, the contract of Vermeer of 2006. It is 2005. So the ordinary court to do it. Then Datiba left. Datiba has written a book and condemned the Supreme Court on this matter, mentioning that case. Go and get the book and read. But the Supreme Court. When Datiba left, mm -hmm. Martin Alamisu Amidu who had contracted and got a sign with MPP through a Sankuma in London was on a political agenda. He accused his own people that they were corrupt and everything. When he cannot prove it, he attempted to beat the former president. He was sacked. That for his subordination. That he has denied. Not, I am telling you I'm a fact. I'm just saying he has denied for the record. He was sacked. Mm -hmm. Now this government has come here 
and make sure that they are paid a uh, judgment debt to Martin Amidu for being sacked wrongly. Sack is sacked. Somebody who appointed you and they ask Martin Amidu whether you are not collecting judgment debt now for this. So Martin Alamisu Amidu went and linked me to a contract of 2006, which I'm not linked to at all. I'll come back to you. We'll and then, then they know that it was a final judgment. So they delivered it and thinking that they have tied my hand. No. I'll come you back. have opened my hand. I'll come back. We'll talk about Martin Amidu. This is Face to Face on CTTV. My guest, Alfred Agbeshi Wayme, I'm Umar Amadou. Don't go away. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We live in a world where news travels fast. And sometimes, it's hard to differentiate fact from fiction. Fact Finder brings fact-checking from the newsroom up close so you can separate truth from chaff. Be empowered to tell what's fake from what's real. Watch Fact Finder by the BBC on City TV every Wednesday at 6 p.m. City TV, it's your world. Thank you for staying with City TV. This is still face to face. My name is Omar Sandamodo. My guest is Alfred Agbashi Women. Martin Alamisi Benz Kaiser Amido. He was removed as Attorney General. He went as a private citizen to court and succeeded in getting the Supreme Court to say that the money given to you was illegally acquired and that you should cough it up. Whether you like it or not, that's what the law report quotes. Okay, good. Um, Masi Alamisu Amidu. Alamisi. Alamisi Amidu. He went to the Supreme Court under which article? 185. Mm -hmm. 1815. Per se. International mm -hmm. agreements. Good. Am I from Azerbaijan? <laughs> or I am soon known as the Togolese guy? Or Dagbon guy? F where I've told you I'm from? Yes. And my brother tells you that I'm a very typical and pure Ghanaian. But what have is not from Dagbon? If you go and what money that was paid to Watavi is separate from money that was paid to Afro Woyome. It was dealt with separately by the lower court. Martin Alamidu magically brought them together. They went there under that article, which is for foreigners. And that article, I won all the nine judges in the Supreme Court. He went to Supreme Court. You're describing it as magic. That's offensive to the bench. It, no, it's not offensive. When you say magically, it means... I say he what? brought these cases together okay. magically. Okay. The bench. They aired. They aired? Yes. The bench aired. You didn't go for judicial review. It is review. a fatal airing. You didn't go for judicial And review. the bench must depart from it. This very decision, they must depart from it. You didn't seek judicial review, which is your best alternative. The review option. had finished. They planned it. Can I, I have won the... Ordinary bench, and then they went on the review, which is the finality in every this in, in Ghana. That is what they did, and that's where in the ordinary bench, Duche, Justice Duche, went there and said, uh, Create loot and yes, share. Who, who created what and who looted what? And Some who persons what? in the let the me explain to you. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you. I took Duche to the African court. And the African court judgment is here with me. Take time and read it and see how they tore Justice Duce apart. What he did was not correct. He should have recused himself. I am the number one defender of the judiciary and I will continue defending the judiciary because I am a child of the judiciary. And I will ensure the judiciary do the right thing. It is our father in this democracy. Anything to prevent war, to do anything, it will be the judiciary. And the judiciary must be sacred. And now, my right, this constitution that has been made here, is they are there for my happiness. For your happiness. We are bigger than the government. The government is for us. 
They must serve us. And that's why we must willingly pay taxes so that their job can be. They are not therefore to be worshipped. Yeah, but the judiciary is an arm of government. And if it has made good, good, says they you erred. Erred. you have erred. They erred and erred badly. The agreement was not taken to parliament. Excuse me. The two, 2006 agreement. Was I in the dock? Did they scrutinize it? That's why they said that they were afraid that the lower court who had taken evidence may come to a different decision to the decision they were doing. They, 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 it was, they wrote it in their, that judgment. They were afraid. Mr. Alfred Agbashi, wait a minute. Listen, the, listen said, the, the, the judgment mm -hmm. which Dochi wrote mm -hmm. in that review said that they are afraid that the lower courts, if they leave the matter for them, will come to a different determination which actually happened in the Court of Appeal. Which says that 2005 is not equal to 2006. 2006 for whatever. I'm not a director. I'm not a member. I'm nothing. I didn't take that agreement to court in order for me to be linked to it. How do you link one year apart event magically? And then Duchess said the sun rose from the east and now illuminated the Watavi counter. And suddenly, Mr. Wayman is linked. In my pleading in the lower court, I mentioned the Waterville agreement that after that, Waterville went, they gave Waterville contract in 2006. If I mention Waterville, does not mean I'm linked to Waterville. My, 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 my contract with government is by effect of law. But it is joined, simple. whether you like it or not, to the Waterville agreement. Erroneously, that's why I said they've heard. Now, the honorable judges know and I know in the deepest of their mind. In fact, about what that Eba has written, that Eba even suggested that if it is not stopped, it can bring chaotic disturbances in this country. It will be a total overthrow of our constitution. Read that Eba analysis. Eba. Why would the executive be against you? And now you are saying the judiciary was also against you. Excuse you? me. Let me explain something to you. Executive being against me, judiciary being against me, it's not my issue. My issue is about what we are talking about now. As I went to the court in the international court, the ICC, I heard them saying that they have won. They didn't win anything. I won there. The question was that, you have linked me to that Waterview contract under that article. So I went to the ICC with the question that, if I am linked to that contract, then hear me so that I can take my rights. Okay. The ICC said, you are not linked to the contract. That's the result I wanted. You are not linked to this contract. Therefore, we, 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 we don't want to go into the matter concerning okay. you. Okay. So when it came, you were jubilating that it is not. That's why I went to the African Court for Women and People's Rights. Okay. And that one... They were challenging. We'll they come, don't have. We'll, we'll come to that court. Now, Why? This is face to face on City TV. You cannot unpack the Alfred Agbeshi women 51 million judgment death case in one sitting or in one show. But we would have to end it for now. We'll be back and continue with this particular conversation. My name is Umaru Sandamadu. Thank you for watching face to face. Do join us again on City TV.